The main purpose of the stock market is to make fools of as many men as possible. Yesterday, 16th of January 2020, the Australian share market reached record highs, with the benchmark ASX 200 breaking the 7,000-point milestone for the first time in history. It closed 0.67% higher at 7,041. Looking at this year alone, in terms of world markets, the ASX has been the best-performing developed economy market this year, having surged 5.3% over the last two weeks. The broader All Ordinaries Index followed a similar trajectory, reaching record highs as well, closing at 7,158 yesterday. So what's going on here? Australia has been burning with some of the worst bushfires in recorded history. Retail stores have been struggling, with more than 160 stores already set for closure, and we're only one fortnight into the new year. But yet, the share market is going gangbusters. What the hell's going on? Well, first of all, it tells us one major thing. Don't try to predict the share market. Even when the land around us is burning, the share market has continued its steady climb upwards. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that it will continue this way, but it does go to show you that there are many factors at play, not just the latest news. Secondly, if you don't invest in the share market due to fear or otherwise, then you're guaranteeing yourself a certain result. Not investing equals no returns. In economics, it's called an opportunity cost. If you want to play it safe, yes, you can just put all your money in the bank. If you're lucky, you can pick up a term deposit with an interest rate of around 2%. However, you mustn't forget that inflation is projected to trend around 1.9%, meaning that if you're earning only 2% interest in the bank, most of that will be eaten up by inflation. You're essentially not earning anything while the bank profits. This is a trend across the world. Central banks are slashing interest rates to try to spur on their economies. Consequently, savings rates are falling, meaning you'll probably be getting less and less interest throughout 2020. And this leads on to the answer to our question. Why are markets so high? Well, I think the major reason is that there is nowhere else for investors to put their money, especially for casual investors like myself. Taking into account inflation, savers have been given the royal scroogey, earning not much better than 0%. Consequently, we have a flood of investors putting a large portion of their savings into the Australian share market. Is this healthy? I don't know, but it certainly is the current reality. Just as a note, current conditions in the ASX are fairly expensive. The current P-E ratio, price to earnings ratio, is about 18.2 times. The historical average for the ASX is around 15. I'm not going to go into too much detail about P-E ratios, but I will just read a couple of excerpts from Australia's largest online stockbroking firm, Comsec. Essentially, a P-E ratio reflects the earnings potential of a company in the eyes of investors. The P-E ratio of the broad Australian share market has for the most part fluctuated between 10 and 20, with a long-term average of around 15. When share markets and the wider economy are doing well, investors tend to be more confident about the future earnings potential of companies, causing P-E ratios to rise. If you're considering buying shares in a company, it can be useful to compare its P-E ratio to that of the broader market market, and particularly other companies in the same sector. A company's current P-E ratio should be considered in conjunction with its previous and forward projected P-E ratio, and broader financial performance and outlook, as well as that of its peers and the wider market. Essentially, P-E ratio is just another piece of fundamental analysis to help you assess the value of a share. It's not foolproof, and is certainly not the only way to assess the value of the share market. The ASX is currently sitting at about 18.2 times, which is considered fairly high, so use that information how you will. If you do choose to invest in the Australian share market, I would certainly recommend a broad-based ETF. Examples include iShares Core S&P ASX 200 ETF IOZ, or Vanguard's Australian Shares S&P ASX 300 Index ETF VAS. These are especially useful for investors who aren't willing to look into individual companies. Investing in individual stocks takes a lot of work. Sure, the payoffs can be better, but you could also lose all your money if the company you invest in goes bankrupt. That's not to say that ETFs are entirely safe, but they certainly do lower the risk associated with individual company fluctuations. Anyway, the Australian share market is up, despite all the disasters going on around the country. If you're tired of earning a pitiful amount of interest in the bank, 
then it might just be time to start investing in the share market. Remember, you probably won't be able to time the market — most people fail at that — but you can choose how long you stay in the market. So-called buy-and-hold investors ignore the daily fluctuations. They just keep investing regularly over many years, knowing that given enough time, markets typically go upwards. You can choose to participate if you want to, or you can sit on the sidelines. But you already know the result if you just sit back and spectate. A life of ever-decreasing returns. Thanks for watching.